Hello, I'm Stuart A. Swerdlow. And Janet Diane Moria Swerdlow. For the Expansions Podcast for the middle of May 2011. Yes, it's the middle of May and it's very cold and chilly here in Michigan as usually this time of year. And as you can see, we're here at the Kitty Hill Organics Farms. We're going to show you where all the great organic food that we use comes from. And in fact, you can hear the tractors and the animals in the background. And so we're going to go meet the owner of the farm. How fast will this thing go? Not real fast. No. <laughs> I thought you'd give us a ride or something. Uh, we'll put you in the bucket. <laughs> I thought you were going to say we'll that. And then we'll dump you. Thank you very much. Well, I'm good fertilizer, right? There you go. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> What'd you do back I'm full in the of 60s? something. I'm full of something. <laughs> 60s, I was, well, I was more than the fetus. I agree. <laughs> Still in the womb. We can, we can d claim that anyway, yeah, right? right? Well, anyone, everyone, this is Cindy. You'll never believe her last name. Cindy grew it. And yes, she grew all the stuff that you're going to see here uh, today and for the rest of the season. So thank you, Cindy, for being on our show. No problem. Thanks for coming out and seeing us. Uh, well, this is where all our wonderful food comes yep. that we eat almost every day. And every day we say thank you, God, for Cindy. That's right. <laughs> because we have a lot of food on our table all mm -hmm. through the winter even. She has... Uh, um, cabbage, cauliflower, greens that she keeps under the mm -hmm. snow. And when it's snowing, she comes out in the cold mm -hmm. and harvests it, and we get wonderful, fresh, organic produce right from the garden in the middle of the winter. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing what she does, as well as she creates pickles and blueberry sauce and spices. Yeah, dried yeah. spices, uh, pickled cauliflower. Going back to old roots. Yeah. Of how things used to be. And don't forget the organic yes. eggs. Yes, all through the winter yeah. organic eggs we have. So it comes from these girls eating right off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of bugs and worms and all the things that make eggs really good. It's interesting, I have to tell you this, I haven't told you this, but I had a fellow here from our last workshop. He's a chef. And I was had boiled some eggs. And I said, well, you're a chef. Can you please help me peel the eggs? He says, sure. So he's cracking away. He says, I can't believe how hard these eggshells are. He said the eggshells are even harder than what he's used to. Oh, sure. The whole they have a better calcium diet, and it's the little stress factor of them, too. They're, there's no stress on them. They're out living the way they're supposed to live. I, I'm going to be one of your chickens. <laughs> <laughs> like you they're happy. Me. There's That's no right. doubt about Wandering, that. Wandering. Not thing a thing real thing. long life, though. <laughs> and that guy is a chef, and he said it was the best food he's ever had. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. I love compliments like that. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, amazing. so many people have, are not not used to having right fresh. They don't realize the difference in taste nor the organic yeah. end. Yeah. Nobody knows what food really is. Food no, they right. don't. And they, they don't understand. You know, they worry about the chemicals and stuff in the food, but they're not worrying about the chemicals in the prepared foods they're getting. Sure. You know, if you look on the list of those prepared foods instead of preparing it yourself, there's so many chemicals in there. Now, what you give us is so fantastic, and we're so grateful. So we thought it would be fun to kind of watch the farm progress through oh, the season. Oh, it will be because it's great for people to see that because yeah. most people don't get a chance to see that. Most people come out here when everything's already growing and yeah. it's just good to see, okay, it does start with dirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dirt it really basic. does start with dirt. It's the basic stuff. Well, show us around a little bit. Okay, and we'll go back here and we'll show you what happens when it gets chilly out. We have to cover up the strawberries. Berries, if you look, if you look into here, you can see how the strawberry forms. See, this is the start of the blossom, yep. and inside there's where the berry is. Very cool. We and when get... do these uh, get ripe enough to harvest? Uh, actually, last year we were just getting about ready to pick because we had more heat. You can see here is the berries forming a little more so right there. 
And this is the stage you don't want them to freeze at. Mm -hmm. So you have to cover these every night now? Not every night, but they were calling for frost last night, so I wanted to get the really low area oh, just uh -huh. in case. Yeah. And that's considered a frost cloth. It looks like a big piece of uh, dryer sheet. Oh. And it feels like it. It feels like a bounce sheet or something. Just light enough to keep the frost off. You can't use plastic because the uh, compound with the plastic will cause the plant to freeze. Oh. So you have to use like a sheet or something. You can use plastic as long as it were like hard plastic and didn't touch the plant. But if it makes contact, it will hurt it. So is that a lot of work for you or just you're so used to it that it goes one, two, three? No, it's time. It's a lot of work. Because okay. you got to, you know, you got to put dirt or something along the sides yeah. to keep it held down. So it's kind of like making a big bed. <laughs> I don't want to do that every is, day. I know. It's, it's, it can be a hassle. In Michigan, early in the season, there's many times that... I'll get tomatoes and things planted. I have to come out here with pots at night and put on top of them just to, you know, because they'll still produce later, but they just won't have as good a lot. A lot so. of farmers don't really put anything until June 1st here in the ground. Is that yeah, I usually don't put, like, out my tomatoes and that kind of thing unless I have them in a protected area or I have, like, that or a tunnel. Okay. So I'm getting ready to put out, like, some squash and some tomatoes and some peppers, but then I'll cover them with hoops and plastic and keep them under that for a few weeks. So just so they can get a boost. So do you sleep at all during this time of year when you're planting? Are you working like seven days a week? I tend to go to bed about 3 o'clock and I'm usually back out here about 8, 8.30. Can okay, you need 3 o'clock in the morning? Yes. Oh, you're kidding. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I still have to do, you know, the lotions and bottling and stuff, so that can't be done during the day. i got to right. do this during the day. So. Wow. And then this is the garlic that gets planted in the fall and then we harvest it in about June. What's Walla Walla? Besides the town onion. of Washington. Walla walla. Onion. <laughs> oh, I she's know. also pole dancer. You should know. <laughs> <laughs> That's I my know. side job. It's yeah. a secret. <laughs> coming, from walla walla, coming from Washington State, of course, we have walla walla onions. They're yeah. very famous in Washington State, so we couldn't wait for the walla walla onions to come out. They're very juicy and sweet. They're very good. That's get, what uh, you usually get for me is the walla walla. Yeah, superstar big daddy over there. Yeah, those That's are what supposed they call to be. me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you're in the ground, man. Are, a little too early. Mm. You, you forgot the name Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Name Stewart. Them. Superstar, Big Daddy Stewart. That's it. <laughs> Sounds like a racer. I know, but it's all true. <laughs> Would you guys like to see where the mushrooms are? Oh, yeah. It's a little bit of a walk, but it's an interesting thing to see because sure. nobody does that. Absolutely. Okay. It's just down in the table. Is it the mushrooms scary in there? When you put these up. They're usually up out here with these streamers like this because if you didn't, the birds would eat all your strawberries. Mm -hmm. So this flaps around and it makes noise and the reflection scares them and it keeps them out of the berries. That's good. Or you can be like too. my neighbor and he sits out there with a shotgun waiting for him. <laughs> a little bit more too hard. hard. <laughs> Not too red, Nikki. I'd flappy things. <laughs> now, what about your fence line? Is there this is there... blackberries here. Okay. Right here and blackberries here. Uh-huh. And then behind the blackberries there are raspberries. And now what's, what will you plant here? This will be some more onions here, and this will be tomatoes and peppers mainly. Fabulous. And then indeed, oops. These are the logs. Oh, you draw the mushrooms there? Yeah, these are inoculated with shiitake spores. Oh. So you get approximately three foot sections of logs mm -hmm. and you can see how the spaces are where we drill the holes. Mm -hmm. Then we pump in an inoculant, mm -hmm. the spores of the mushroom. Mm -hmm. Then you cover it with wax mm -hmm. and then you put them down here. Wow. And it takes about a year for them to start producing mm -hmm. and they produce for approximately five years. Wow. But it's very important. A lot of people today are growing the mushrooms like in composting yes. stuff and indoors. You don't get the full polyphenols and all the effects of the mushroom if they're not grown in there proper. Now see, I didn't know that at all. I thought you were supposed to grow it in the manure and the compost and all that. Well, you can. Mm -hmm. What they're trying to do there is to create nature, but if you put it right into the wood... Right, that's nature. Yeah, that's their know. real way. No, I've heard that if you eat too many mushrooms, it can do damage to your livers. How do you feel about that? I don't think that that's true and depend upon the mushroom. I don't particularly care for the button mushrooms because they are just grown in the manure. They don't seem to have as much 
health benefits for you, and from what I read, they can be a carcinogenic. Mm -hmm. But now if you're dealing with shiitakes, portobello, chanterelles, all those other mushrooms, they, or the morels, they, they're a much more natural source of mushrooms, so they have a lot more healing benefits. Mm, I wouldn't be in fear of eating them at all, and I used to love button but mushrooms too, but I don't touch them now. Really? Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Thanks for letting us know that. Yeah, that's the part I just don't like about them, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it's like over here we may be able to, it looks like nothing's here, but when you start looking for these mushrooms, you really have to, aha, come over here, we actually have one coming out. Yay! You come over here, see how they come oh, out yeah. of the wood. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted you guys to come down here. This is uh, this is not something that very many people do. No, well, I've never I even seen it. I became very fortunate because my nephew is a scientist with Duke uh, University, uh, and his specialty is mushrooms. You're, oh. That is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That is just oh, a beautiful amazing. picture, too. Mm. Yep, and so you really have to, you know, like, well, look, and we'll go, there's none, but then you have to kind of come down here and go uh -huh. like this and look. How do you know they when they're can... ready? Um, it's all kind of a little bit new to me, but you'll get about five to six flushes of them, mm -hmm. and I always come down here and check after it rains mm -hmm. because it tends to, they like mm -hmm. to be wet. So mm -hmm. I'll come down and water them often if it gets too dry. Mm -hmm. I just come okay. and water the logs. There's just no end to what you do. You're amazing. <laughs> yeah, there is. And um, you have to wax these. This is a kind of interesting point. Uh, each hole and end of a log where anything that is a scar or an opening has to be waxed before it's put down here. Because if you don't wax it, then in some other fungi, oh. we'll get inside uh -huh. and take over the morel and you won't have a, or the shiitake and you won't have a true mushroom. Really? That's interesting. So you have to wax off each one of these. You'll see, see how that's waxed. Mm -hmm. We waxed every single hole and then we waxed ends so that everything was mm -hmm. closed. Well, you know, so again, this tells me about the integrity of the farmer. You know, like you said, you could probably do what you're saying without all the waxing and have a shiitake mushroom, but it's right. not. But it's but, not the proper right, way to do and it. it could be compromised as far as nutritional content exact. and what you might be putting in your body. Mm -hmm. See, I would never have thought of that. So that's why it's so good that you're so um, exact on what you do and you do the research. Well, you and I think it's very important that way. And a big thing that we have to remember is everyone thinks I'm doing something that's all new. Like when I first said, no, mm -hmm, yeah. this is all old. Right, right. <laughs> you know, if we could get back to the roots of simplicity of mm -hmm. the old way of things being mm -hmm. done. Well, the old ways are being lost purposefully because then people can't feed themselves. They don't know exactly. how. Exactly. And that's how. a very sad situation yes, because, I mean, what happens when, look at what's happening to the world these days. Yes. What happens when, you know, only places is... The corporations that have the food, then they're going to be in control right. of us. Well, I actually read that their long, you know, long-term plan is that everybody will go to the government for food. You know that they will have I don't doubt that. like a food, you know, nutritional ball or something. Soil and green. Yeah, there you go. That, oh, that I don't doubt that. They will eat only that, and they, because this will be totally lost. I do not doubt that at all. Yeah. The little laws and stuff. I mean, that they want to put on you. I've had. I had someone from Walmart stop here and want to know if I wanted to grow for them, and I said, absolutely not. And they were like, why wouldn't you? You know, mm -hmm. it could be good for you money-wise. I said, first off, you can come in here and tell me exactly what I need to do, and mm -hmm. no one tells me what I need to do. Yeah. And the guy looked at me, and I said, he goes, really? And I said, no, sir, I do things the way I feel is the right way, mm -hmm. and that's how I'm going to do them. Mm -hmm. And I'd be darned if someone else, because they give me some money, is right. going to tell me how to. And so what they do oftentimes that. with the small farmers is, like if you're successful, they come in, they buy you out, they give you a lot of money. Let's say they put your name on it, Kitty Hill Organics, mm -hmm. and then they gradually replace what you did with something else. Exactly. So the people think they're they still buying right, Kitty Hill Organics, mm -hmm. and they're not. Exactly. So it's, it's kind of Everything is very deceitful out there. It is. It's very dishonest. Yes. It's very deceitful. And this year I'm going to um, even make my own fertilizer. Well, not my own fertilizers, but my own um, sprays and stuff because... I'm getting very apprehensive of what I'm buying on the market if it's real. Right, right. You know, I'm, I'm smelling different smells and my nose is so accustomed to smells that I'm like, I don't think this has what it's supposed to have in it. Well, it's interesting. And I hope you do some of those uh, uh, sprays and what herbicides, pesticides, mm -hmm. I'm assuming, because perhaps people like me could come and buy some eventually from yes. you as well. And I will know you as a grower and what you're putting into it right. and the integrity And of what's the going on the product. And that's right. so important. You know, like these big places that, you know, we can all claim organic and we all have a different feel of that. But... You know, you start being a big place, you're sending Joe Blow out there right. to 
to take care of your crops and he's getting frustrated so he doesn't want to use this organic thing so he's going to cheat and right. shoot something chemical on there because it's yes. quicker yes mm -hmm. yeah. you know and i can see where that frustration comes in but you have to do it right right yeah. now everybody soon everybody else loses their integrity but well, this yes. is so fast isn't this cool this is it reminds me of lincoln logs <laughs> yes, yes <that's> true. <laughs> that's that's we, have, we have lincoln logs in our woods lincoln logs with fungus growing see, like we have Three more piles down there. Uh -huh. You can see them from uh -huh. here. Okay. So. How many acres do you actually have here? You we have 10 farm. acres, 9.95. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The woods goes, our property ends just before the neighbor's, the next neighbor's driveway. So about half woods about half it and, woods and half, half cleared. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah, that's enough to keep you busy with Seems the way bigger. you farm. Seems like it's more. I know, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. I know everyone goes, you got a big farm? And I'm like, no, this is really a small farm. Yeah. I always call it my garden because uh -huh. compared to the farmers around me, it sure. is a garden. Yeah. But I can, you know, everyone says, you can't plant like that. You do. Uh, I have been. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I plant very close. I, yes. I interplant. I put broccoli down. I put lettuce around the broccoli. Mm -hmm. I put lettuce around my strawberries. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just yes. plant where you can plant it. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and you know how things interact with each other as Exactly. Well. And they help keep away certain insects and things. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and feed each other. Yeah. Fascinating. Right. It's, all part, it's all part of the big picture, you know. Well, and that big picture has been lost. You know, my, my grandfather planted that way, and I often think, you know, he grew organic. But if, and he would laugh that was now. his way. Right, he would laugh now if he heard that this was some specialty, because that's all he knew. Oh, uh, exactly. It's great. It's grandparents and great grandparents, and they are. I mean, unfortunately, you know, my mother died when I, my both my parents died when I was 23, and I didn't know my grandparents. But I am so fascinated, and I love being around older people. Yes, they have And the knowledge. stories and stuff that they can give you. Amazing. These vineyards over here, that's... Uh, oh, the great vineyards. Great. There's 250 acres back there. Mm -hmm. But not, those are not organic. No, they are not organic. So that's why there's a nice little back pathway of bushes here. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Kind of helps filter. And the farmers back there are pretty cool about when they get to the end of the rows, they shut the sprayer off. Well, that's good. Yeah, well, they're respectful because they use my driveway. Wow. Okay, <laughs> they had no other way to get back there with the semis when they harvest. So it's like, aha. Uh -huh. That's right. We have a deal. <laughs> you want to come through my driveway, you better be nice. <laughs> and I'm real strict about it. They came through one day and something came out the side of the tractor. And my husband and I both, both had a heart attack. And went, I was not going to do with that thing running ever again. <laughs> Good for you. It's changed the environment. I was talking to talking about older people he said that he was 80 and he said when he used to go hunting he would walk through brush there was all kinds of growth and stuff he said after roundup started coming out you get out there and there would be nothing he said and it was it was pleasant to walk through because there was nothing but there was also no creatures oh, that hid in that type of stuff he said the birds the pheasants uh, he said, mm -hmm. and I watched it about every 10 to 15 years get worse and worse. Interesting. Less and less weeds, less and less growth, but less and less environmental things like the animals. Well, things you wouldn't think about. We need those things. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We need the bugs and everything has, you know, like people come out, oh, I hate bees. You don't have bees. You don't, right. you don't have anything. Right, they, you don't pollinate. They pollinate, so. Yes. And you what know, about and it's this? All interactive. What's going to be in this garden here? This will be all various things. This will have beans in it. It'll have peppers, all kinds of different peppers, a lot of greens, a lot of cold crops. And on that section right there is planted with potatoes oh, where the already. sticks are. Yeah. Now, how many potato plants did you tell me you planted? I planted 750 pounds of potatoes. Wow. <laughs> oh, so lot. just for us. Yeah, yeah it's just for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You, now, you use the heirloom. Is that correct? The heirloom yes, potatoes? Yes, the potatoes, all the older style potatoes, okay. the reds and the blues and all of that. All right, mm. interesting. And lower carb, I think. They have lower me. carbs in them. They hold up better. They're mm. not a hybrid. Yeah, interesting. And hybrid is freaky. Last year we did an experiment. We raised 20 hybrid chickens. Mm -hmm. We did them organically also. But they're not real. Something is wrong with those chickens. <laughs> I mean, when we got them, it was, it was a, an experience for us. And we couldn't get the ones we wanted. And I said, well, let's try 20 of these just so that we can see. I mean, mm -hmm. we're still going to raise them organically, but we'll see what mm -hmm. the action is that's different. Those chickens were strange-looking chickens. They grow really fast. So they're, they're kind of odd. Their legs get big and mm -hmm. plump fast. But you watch them, and they don't act normal. They'll lay there, and all they want is the food you give them. Really? Like if you they give won't them go grain, out and hunt. They won't pick from the ground. Right. It's not they don't them. dig. Hmm. 
it's you know it's like okay they're hybrid all right yeah. they're not real well, well, they <laughs> I mean, we're that, yes well they don't know to be a real chicken mm. i mean I, we're watching them going mm. okay this is a little creepy yeah uh, you know because i'm so used to my chickens i mean i open that door they can't wait to get grab a bug out of the ground wow you might have to open a chicken school teach them how to be chicken <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Oh, that would be funny. Now they just got to learn from each other. Actually, though, I thought that they would because that 20 was in a pen with the other chicken. Mm -hmm. And I thought there would be that, you know, how, like, if you put cats and dogs together, they'll right, teach each other. Right. They did have that. Mm -hmm. th that tells me majorly hybrid. Mm -hmm. And in one season, how many times do you harvest your plants? No, oh, not that many. No. I think. Maybe I mean, six or seven? I, yeah. Well, I pick, I pick as they come. Yeah. So, I mean, they're coming, they're fresh, they're small, they're not the oversized. Right. They're and they're flavorful. Up. Exactly. Which is surprises even me, that a green bean is not a green bean. No, and, it, and you're right, the flavor just disappears with all of that. What have you got in here, Cindy? These are Muscovy ducks. Wow. Muscovy ducks? Muscovy. Muscovy. And these guys, um, the mallard quack, quacks, but none of the Muscovy's quack, they are a quackless duck. Hmm. Hmm. But if you look at the male, see their big red faces? Yep. And when they get excited, it grows more. And they get more. <laughs> really? It comes up straight. Well, I, know that. I thought they would Butch look. right there, the gray one. Uh -huh. He's the oldest one. And he looks like he has a leather mask on. I yeah. call him our, our crusader. He's yeah. a superhero. <laughs> He's the Muscovy superhero dog. Yeah. He looks like he has a leather mask around his face. <laughs> but that, I, like this one here, she's mm -hmm. got like great markings by her beak and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Actually, very good meat. And I was supposed to have them processed, but the guy who processes mine got sick. Uh, but that's good because my freezer went out. So, <laughs> so there's a reason. So they yeah, have a, so it all happened for a reason. They have exactly. a reprieve. So they got a little bigger. Yeah. So they'll be bigger ducks. Yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll still be wonderful. Yeah. And they'll come back as more Cindy ducks. Probably. That's right. Once they're, they've had this life cycle, they said, I had it so good there, I'm coming back again. And that is one thing I, I didn't think, like, when I raised the chickens for meat, I wasn't sure I could do that. Mm -hmm. So I just thanked all the chickens before I took them away. I thanked them for, you know, and I think they thanked me back. They looked like they did. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, oh, they oh. Have, and they had a great life. Yes, and they, they, have, they don't have a long life, and they would have had a terrible life had they not come with me. Right? And they have a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting, mm -hmm. isn't it? Ah. Uh, Spring. Must be something to do with the females getting their attention. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look at me. That's right. <laughs> oh, that was it. <laughs>